So a while ago, I created a YouTube video that shows you how to add Stripe checkout to your Wix website. Today, I'm going to show you another way to do the same thing. I would argue that this way, it's more complicated, but I think it's a bit more correct. And um, I'll try to go over that at the end of the video. But first, I want to just show you how to do it. A few prerequisites. You're going to need to have a Stripe account and you're going to need to have a Wix account. You don't need to be a coder or a programmer, but you do probably need to have a little bit of understanding how HTML and websites work. Um, you also have to upgrade. You can't, this, this won't work if you have just a free Wix account. And the reason for that is this technique relies on adding a code to your, some code to your website that's called Stripe.js. And, you know, the way you do that is you go to settings, advanced, custom code. And um, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But Stripe.js, in order to add code from another, like what they call a third party, in this case, Stripe, Wix doesn't allow you to do that unless you are running your Wix site on your own domain. And that's for security reasons, I think. So in order to add Stripe.js, you have to have your own domain. And in order to have your own domain, you have to upgrade to the first tier of service that allows you to connect your own domain to your Wix website. I'm not going to go over how to do that in this tutorial because there's documentation on Wix for how to do it. And even if I showed you how I did it, it might be a little bit different for you depending on who your domain registrar is. So today we're going to be spending a lot of time in the Wix website editor. For this tutorial, I'm just starting with, you know, a completely blank page. The other thing I want to show you is that I created a code repo in GitHub for this tutorial, and I will be pasting a link to this code repo in the video description so that you can come back here and find the code for yourself and copy paste it into your own website. All right, so let's get started first with adding Stripe.js to the page. So I'm going to first, I'm just going to go into the Stripe documentation. And I'm going to copy this snippet. And then I'm going to go back into the dashboard and settings and I'm going to click add custom code. I'm going to paste the code snippet here. So this code snippet and I'm going to name this Stripe.js. So this code snippet, it all it does is it goes and gets some code from Stripe that the Stripe team has created and it adds a toolkit to your website. Um, that will make it easier for us to interact with Stripe. So I'm going to give you from here an overview of all the different parts to this and then go back into it a little bit more detail. So I'm kind of going to go over all of this uh, twice, once really fast and the second time more slowly. So this Stripe.js code, um, we add it here in the dashboard, but you can kind of think of it as like adding as it, as it as it will let, you could think of it as loading at the top of this page in the background. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a purchase button. So I'm just going to call this buy plan A. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, you're going to go to add embed, embed a widget. Um, Wix calls this a widget. Uh, the more technical term is an iframe. So these are the main parts. We've got the purchase button, the iframe, and you know we've got this uh, Stripe JS code hanging out in the background. What happens is when the customer clicks the buy button, the information about that product is going to be sent into this iframe right here, and then this iframe is just going to relay that product information up to the page here um, where it will be get where you know it will go to stripe js so if you're thinking gosh this seems like kind of a rube goldberg device it's a little bit complicated um, you're right in a normal website what would happen is you would you wouldn't have this iframe relay you would just have the purchase button 
and you have some code that listens for the click and it would just call stripe.js directly. But because this is a Wix site, there's some limitations that Wix has put on the coding environment, I think, you know, for security reasons. So this is kind of a workaround. We have to use this iframe relay in order to get around some of the restrictions. That said, I don't think that it's actually a, I don't think it's really necessarily a hack. Um, the, you know, the, the way that Wix has architected these sites is pretty careful. So I think this is a, it's a workaround, but it's a valid workaround is, is what I think. Um, I could be wrong about that, but, um, and I'm not going to explain to you why I think that's the case but you'll just have to take my word on it, I guess. Um, so that's the, the bird's eye overview. Now I'm just going to, I'm going to work my way from the outside in. Um, so we're going to start with the, so this is the outside Stripe JS. This is the, this code here is going to create a checkout page for the customer. It's going to talk to the Stripe platform. So we're going to add some code side by side with this that interacts with this toolkit. Um, that code lives in a file called stripejs-integration. So let's quickly go over what this does. Um, what it does when it loads is it first it registers your account with the toolkit. Then it listens for messages. And then it checks, you know, is this a message that I'm listening for? And if so, it unpacks the message. And then this is where the magic happens. It calls stripe.redirect ch to checkout. And it passes that product information to that toolkit so it can create the checkout page for your customer. So let's just go ahead and copy this code. Go back to the dashboard. We're going to add another custom code snippet and we're going to paste it here. The one thing we have to modify is your API key. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to be using my test key, which is right here. And I'm going to paste it here. When you do this live, You'll have to use your live API key, but um, for now, I'm just using the test key. I'm going to name this Stripe.js integration. The name doesn't really matter. I'm just giving it something um, that makes sense and saving. So again, we're working outside in. We've got Stripe.js and then what calls Stripe.js, this code snippet that we just put in here. So now let's go to the iframe. The code that we're going to put in the iframe lives in this file, iframe relay.html. So also let's take a look at what this does. When it loads, it listens for messages, kind of like the last code file. It listens for a message. And if it's the kind of message it's looking for, it basically just relays that message up to the parent of this, the, the, of this iframe. So that means the, you know, the page behind it basically. So, Let's go ahead and copy this page, uh, this code. And when we paste it here, uh, the only thing you have to modify here is that in, uh, instead of it being you know, example.com, you're just gonna put your own domain here and save. Okay, so now remember working outside in, we've got Stripe.js, we've got Stripe JS integration, which calls Stripe JS, and then we've got this iframe, which is basically going to pass a message to Stripe JS integration, and so on. So, <clears throat> what is going to call into the iframe? So, we're going to start with uh, this file called iframe relay. And we're going to copy this code. So over here on the side, we have this thing called code files, and then we have public. So we're going to add a file, and it's going to call, we're going to call it iframe relay.js. This file is basically just going to provide some functions to talk to this iframe here. So we're going to paste that code and just take a look at it real quickly. So the first thing it does is it um, stores the ID of that iframe in a variable. So you can see here the same ID um, for this iframe. It's pound HTML1. So you see it here, pound HTML1. And then it just provides some functions that all it does is it gets that iframe and it sends 
a message, it sends the data into it. So now that we've got that in place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire up this button here and that code lives in a file called handle button click. So we copy this code and we paste it here. Okay, so what does this code do? <clears throat> so what it does, it first imports this function that we defined in this iframe relay file. This function relay stripe checkout info. Then, you know, it waits for the page to load. That's what this on ready is. And then um, I'm gonna skip these two lines. It, what it does is it then finds this button. You see it uses the ID pound button one. You see that right here, pound button one. And then it registers a click handler on that button. So basically it's just gonna listen for a click. And when that button is clicked, it's gonna call these lines of code, lines 14 through 18. It's going to call that function that we defined here in this file, relay stripe checkout info. And what it's going to do is it's just going to pass along the price ID. So let's, let me show you where you get that from. You go into the Stripe dashboard, you go to products. You can see I've already created a plan A here. And this product, all you do is you go to the pricing section and you find the ID here and then you copy it. So then we're gonna go back to the e editor and we're just gonna paste it here. So what this does is it's gonna, you know, it's gonna pass that price ID and these two things, cancel URL and success URL. What they do is um, the cancel URL is what happens when a customer clicks, goes in, starts the checkout process and then cancels it. And then success is what happens you know, after they've gone through the whole checkout process successfully. For this tutorial, I'm just setting both of those to be this page here that we're working on. So if the user cancels out of the checkout, it'll take them back here. And if they go all the way through, it'll just take them back here. Okay, so that was very fast, but that's all the pieces in place. Um, so now I'm gonna go just work from the inside out. So customer clicks on this button. What happens is um, that click goes here and it passes the price ID for this plan A and the you know, cancel and success URL, it passes it into this iframe here. This iframe takes that price ID and the other info and just relays it back up to this code snippet that we created here which what it will do is unpack that message. You can see the price ID right here. And then it just calls the toolkit with that same data. So it's stripe.redirect checkout. You can see you know, price ID here, uh, cancel and success URL, which then is handled by Stripe.js to create a checkout for your customer. So I think I did all that correctly. I'm gonna publish the site and we're gonna view it. And if I did everything right, we click on the button and yes, it takes us to a Stripe checkout page. You can see there it is, plan A, the price. Like I said, I set this up for the tutorial. Like if the customer cancels the checkout, like we're gonna do right now, it just takes us back to the page we're working on. Um, so I know that was a lot, but I hope that's enough to get you started. Uh, I said I would talk real quickly about why I think this is better. Um, a couple of reasons. One is that in the previous technique, all of the buttons, each button had its own iframe that it was loading in. And iframes are, you know, pretty cheap, but they're not they're not zero. The cost of them is more than a button. So in terms of like computing resources and memory. So if you added a bunch of them to a page, it might slow it down. I'm not sure I haven't really tested it, but um, this is definitely less overhead. Um, the other thing is that uh, it has to do with Stripe.js. So previously we were loading, each iframe had its own little, in the other, in this, you know, in this video here, this technique, um, it was, loading in each of those buttons, it was loading its own 
copy of Stripe.js. And that's not, you know, it's not wrong, but it's not ideal because the way that Stripe prefers you to do it is that you load the live, you load that toolkit at the top of your page because it does some of the thing, it does some things in the background. Like it, it tries to see, okay, where is this customer coming from? What country are they in? What IP? I think it does these sorts of things. I, I don't know. I haven't worked this trip, so I don't know, but I know that it does some things in the background like that. It um, also is going to observe how the customer is interacting with your site. And if anything looks fishy, if it looks like a robot, you know, it might flag that purchase as impossibly fraudulent for you to review. So that's why I think this method's better. It's just, it's less overhead and it, you know, it adds that Stripe.js library at the top of your website. So it just, it just seems like overall a cleaner way to do this. Um, it's, but it is, the downside is it's a bit more complicated. As you can tell, this video is a lot longer than the other one. But like I said, I hope that's enough to get you started. Um, good luck.